so hello and welcome to the channel once again now I thought I would get some notes uh, for this video because usually I just ramble um, through these videos and sometimes these are tough subjects to cover um, so I thought I would make some notes now I've just spent um, probably the last three hours watching videos all about using MoTeC and dampers and obviously we haven't got MoTeC or the use of it on console so trying to tune the dampers is really a, it is a minefield of how the car feels on every single lap whether you're seeing um, negative delta or whether you're actually getting a positive delta whether you're better in your lap time really so I thought I would um, try and put this video together really with my little list of things that I would approach each time you come to set a car up now if you're new to setting cars up it's probably a hugely daunting subject but I've got eight things on my list that I like to go through when I'm setting cars up so number one is going to be tyre pressures now you're going to have to run I would say at a minimum five sessions two or three maybe yeah I'd say three three laps at least um, so every time you're running your laps you're checking the tyre pressures and then you're coming in when they're hot just pause the game straight back to the garage and you're checking your tyre pressures you're trying to hit that 27.8 all round make adjustments on the tyres as to what you need go back out do another three laps things will change even if you adjust like the, the only tyre that you adjust is the rear right for example it could affect the front left so just run a number of laps and you're trying to get that figure so that at, at the most crucial points on the lap and I know it's crucial all the way around but you're just trying to see that consistent 27.8 all the way around the lap really obviously um, they're going to change whether the temperature of the circuit changes whether the time of day changes so these are going to be fundamental in every single session that you run so always trying to get the tires in a, in a proper operating window and that's going to be affected by the brake ducts as well so you may need to open and close these make sure that the tire is getting green and it's not blue at any stage so if it's getting blue you're going to need to close out those brake ducts and that again will affect tire temperature so and tire pressures so always trying to get your tires temperatures and your tire pressures tire temperatures should be around 90 celsius um, somewhere between 80 and 90 something like that. you never really want to be going over 100 on the temperature and the tire pressure is obviously 27.8 number two on the list is going to be suspension anti-roll bars and ride height they're all going to do a very similar thing in the fact that it's going to reduce understeer or increase it or reduce oversteer or decrease it so thinking about ride height are you going over any curbs the undulation as you go through a rouge perhaps um, bouncing over the curbs at um, Imola all these things are going to affect how low you can run the car and obviously we're always trying to run it as low as you can so the best bet for me would be to set the car as high as you can find out whether you're hitting any curbs or the, the car's scraping at any point while you're going around the track and again that is going to be determined by how how stiff you set the springs as well so we're always trying to set the car as stiff as we can as well so if you set the car um, let's say you use obviously the lower the stiffness of the springs the more uh, grip you're going to um, develop as well so it's kind of that balance between not being too stiff but not being too soft so try and go somewhere in the middle of stiffness and, and I'd always say that most of the cars on um, Assetto Corsa Competizione are going to run a stiffer front end than they are the rear. But again, that is all going to depend on ride height because we've got the rake of the car as well. And that's going to allow us to turn corners more sharply, which is going to affect oversteer, primarily oversteer. So again, you're usually going to have the front of the car sat lower than the rear of the car. So always think about that when you're setting the ride height. Try and, try and sort of work with, if this is a road and this is a car, exaggerated for uh, rake of the car. 
just trying to bring the car down like that when you're lifting and lowering the ride height of the car. Um, Anti-roll bars again, if we, if we get to a stage where you feel comfortable with the anti-roll bars you could either soften them or stiffen them. Obviously stiffening them you're going to reduce the roll of the car um, and obviously if you, if you go with a, a softer anti-roll bar you're going to generate more grip so that it's, that it's always that payoff between grip and balance of the car. But you're just trying to create confidence so if you're throwing the car into a corner and you, you're ever so scared of getting the rear end coming out you might want to stiffen the front of the car to induce more understeer but that would be the second on my list two three things really anti-roll bars suspension and ride height we'll try and work on them as a combination of the three at the same time so three on my list is going to be downforce now obviously places like spa monza um, just high speed circuits really you're going to try and want to run as little downforce as you can and in retrospect other places like Mons, um, Misano or something like that uh, Kailami you're going to probably want to run a higher downforce setup so just trying to work with uh, the ride height and just I think it's more a confidence thing the more downforce you're going to have in, invariably you're going to have more grip so try and work with if you can get away with less downforce go with less downforce if you feel like you're not confident throwing it into somewhere like Puon and you want to have more downforce stick more downforce on it it's better to be confident turning the car in and having that a, a better balance in the car than having um, less downforce and really fighting with the car all, all the way through number four um, is going to be uh, brake balance and generally I, I feel this is a corner entry um, decision really are you comfortable on the brakes going into a corner every time you step on the brake is the rear end wanting to come all the way around when you're coming off the brake is the rear end wanting to come all the way around some some things can be solved in other areas of the car but generally it's a confidence thing for me going into a corner am i confident that i'd probably rather have more understeer going into the corner than oversteer um, especially high speed corners when it's very hard to catch and you're going to end up drifting through the corner you're just scrubbing speed constantly so fourth on the list would be brake balance work on the brake balance fifth would be the differential and um, obviously um, the higher the figure on the differential the more oversteer you're going to get coming out of a corner and that to me is kind of how I work on what the what differential is going to suit me best on the circuit the more oversteer that I can create on corner end exit, the better the differential is going to be set up for the majority of the circuit. And that's not a massive rule of thumb, but for me, if I can handle more oversteer on corner exit and it's rotating the car off the corner better, I would rather open the differential. So a higher figure on the differential. That brings me to traction control, uh, number six on my list. Um, I always choose my traction control based on coming off a corner. So if I'm, let's say, start at two on the traction control. If I'm coming off the corner and the rear end's wanting to overtake, and it's just spinning the car out, we're sort of drifting out of the corner or it's lighting up the rear wheels, go to three, go to four, go to five. We want to be coming off that corner with no wheel spin really. If, you, if you're one of these guys that runs a low, low tra uh, traction control and you're progressively in with your power, that's great. Um, for a lot of newcomers to the game, they're just planting the foot on the accelerator. And you can use the traction control very much to your advantage if you want to do that. And, but just increase the traction control to a point where you're not getting excessive amounts of wheel spin coming off the corner. It's different to the differential, it's not the same thing. The differential is going to give us rotation coming off the corner. Um, the traction control is going to limit wheel spin coming off the corner. They're kind of similar, but they're not going to do the same thing. Number seven on my list is whether you need to run um, ride height and bump stops. Obviously, if the car's bottoming out, you could raise the bump stops so that you're hitting the bump stop, um, the rubber. But again, if you hit that too much, you're just going to end up losing traction altogether and it's going to 
just sort of plow into the turn so if you know you're banging on that bump stop it'll generally give you the sensation that you're just going to run wide sort of instantly it's like an instant understeer effect um, so places like Eau Rouge again it's just you're hitting it's a very deep sort of um, upward rise and it sometimes ends up pushing the car out so sometimes I tend to lift the bump stops quite a lot at, at, um, at Spa <coughs> especially for Eau Rouge and I tend to always set the car a little bit higher just to get through a rouge it's a very bouncy section as you come up and over uh, radion so lastly we move on to the dampers number eight now dampers for me is a fine tuning tool um, again to help with oversteer and understeer so if you're using a stiffer um, front suspension and a softer rear suspension i would set them very similar in the damper section so your, your slow bump or your bump and rebound would be set um, stiffer on the front as they would on the rear if you're using a softer front spring. Um, and I would generally set these, it's not a rule of thumb, there is no rules of thumb to work with dampers in my opinion. Um, I've read it all over but in commonplace these days GT3 cars there just isn't like say for example if you're running 10 on the bump you should be running 20 on the rebound or 25 on the rebound you could run 10 on the rebound and run 10 on on the bump um, it's just for us on console it is just a feel and i don't think there's a massive payoff in spending hours and hours and hours i've just watched three hours of uh, dalking tuning is is um, dampers I've just watched some of Aris tuning his dampers and there's just not a massive payoff in um, in lap time I don't think um, but try being sensible with your damper settings don't just bang them all to maximum and just think yeah that feels good or bang them all soft and that feels good there is kind of like a middle ground I think and just sort of follow the sort of if you've chose like let's say if we have a center line here and this is how you've set your front stiffness on your suspension and this is how you have set your rear stiffness I would choose something very similar for your dampers um, you could go equal I don't see I don't feel like it makes a massive difference so let's say you've got 18 on the bump 18 on the rebound or you could try using 9 on the bump 18 on the rebound just play with it half and half try it try it the other way I don't think you'll notice a massive difference and if I'm running my bump and rebound at 18 I'll probably choose to run my soft my fast bump and rebound at half that or somewhere in between that but I'd never run it more than I'd never run my fast bump more than my normal bump it's a very gray area for us on console we don't have the telemetry we just have the feel and I think even I think every PC driver would tell you it's very hard to set the dampers up on feel alone so it's just trying to find something in the middle ground something similar to your, set, your suspension setup and just work with that if you feel like maximum fast bump and fast rebound works for you just go with it it's personal to yourself and as far as the, the whole setting up of cars goes it's just a personal experience if you if you try my setup that i put on yesterday the ferrari i've made small changes to that since using it again on the dampers and um, just having spent the last day or two reading up on them um, subtle changes but they've not made a massive difference you're talking tents that could be the difference between me better in a corner than i did the first time or not they're, they're just very similar feels um, so hopefully you've enjoyed this not so short short tips video on setting cars up my eight sort of um, progress through setting things up I've just so I've gone from tires suspension anti-roll bar ride height together um, overall grip so looking at your downforce and then I'd work on my brake balance confidence going into the corners then I'd look at the differential can I handle more power coming off the corner then I'd look at the traction control and then whether I need to lift and lower the ride height for hitting bumps or curbs that are unsettling the car again that might be covered in section two and then last of all the dampers in section eight 
and that's it hopefully you've enjoyed the video I hope you found it useful please do like and subscribe share the content and um, smash that thumbs up as well it really does help all the algorithms please leave a comment in the comment section i do appreciate getting any feedback or any discussion within the channel and thanks again ciao for now